Greetings, one and all two universes. In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to find out who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comment section below or in a video response. And who knows, your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. With all that said, let's meet our two fighters. Maui, shapeshifter and hero to all and Hercules, the super strong son of Zeus. The two fictional deities of mythology have been given the Disney treatment and are ready for a fight. Will Hercules go coconuts or will Maui have to face that grease lightning? Let's find out. This is Universes. Maui was not a pretty baby. One look at the premature infant and his parents decided they just didn't want him. So, without hesitation, they threw him into the sea, wanting absolutely nothing to do with him. He was found by a deity who allowed Maui to become a half-deity himself. He gained supernatural powers and used his new abilities to become a bit of a trickster. But most of these tricks were for the sake of mankind. He wanted them to love him since his parents didn't. Some of the gifts he gave were longer days, higher skies, and he attempted to gain the power of creation by stealing the heart of Tefiti, but was struck from the sky. He ended up lost on an island for centuries until he was discovered by a young girl by the name of Moana. Together, Maui and Moana sailed across the sea to restore the heart of Tefiti before all life crumbled. Like I mentioned before, Maui became a half-deity and gained all kinds of powers. Superhuman speed and strength are obvious ones, but he also gained immortality and could not die by aging. In addition to this, Maui also got a magical fish hook made from the jawbone of his ancestress. He can block attacks with it, attack back with it, or even even lasso very large objects. The final ability he can perform with it is shape-shifting. He can transform into any animal or even just change half of himself. He can turn into a giant hawk that can fly with great agility, he can transform into a reptile that's resistant to heat, and he even uses his shape-shifting to its maximum potential in combat, switching back and forth between his normal form and whatever animal best fits the situation. Maui does have a weakness though. Remember earlier how I said he could block attacks with his fish hook? Well, he can, just not very many times. And if the hook takes a few hard enough hits, it will crack and eventually break. And he can't just fix it or make a new one on his own either. It's made from the jawbone of his ancestress. Where's he gonna get another one of those? But when Maui does have his hook, he can do some pretty cool stuff. See all those tattoos on his body? Well, they actually magically appear on his body when Maui earns them. Basically meaning they count. Why, yes, he did grow a coconut tree by burying eel guts. Maui would also use his magical fish hook to pull islands out of the sea in order for wayfinders to discover them, all like some kind of fun little game. He lifted the sky because it was too low and people were having to bend over. He made the days longer by beating the sun until it promised to move slower across the sky. He even survived a massive beating from Tamatoa, a giant crab monster. He even survived getting smacked by the lava demon Teka multiple times and is able to dodge its fireballs. Speaking of fire, when it was lost, Maui actually discovered it and brought it back to the mortals by stealing it from a mythological fire deity known as Mahuika. He can lift boats with a single hand and push gigantic boulders as well. He's definitely a fun folklore character. I guess for using him in universes, all I can really say is, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> The son of Zeus and Hera, or according to actual mythology, the son of Zeus and some random mortal. Ooh, someone's been cheating. But for the sake of avoiding confusion, let's just go with what Disney says here. Both of Hercules' parents loved him very, very much. But there was a huge problem. Hercules was a giant fence in the way of Hades' plan to take over Mount Olympus. To correct this, Hades had Hercules kidnapped and brought to the mortal world where he became immortal as well. But because he didn't drink all of the potion that he was supposed to, he still kept his insane strength. This strength of his did lead to a few problems though, as he was too powerful and didn't know how to control this strength. As such,
such, he left home to find out what was up and where he belonged. He found out he was the son of Zeus and immediately began his training to become a true hero so he could return to his true parents. But in order to become a hero, Hercules would need to get that insane strength under control. He met a satyr named Phil who trained him and helped him learn what he could really do. In fact, he's so tough that he doesn't even need to punch things to break them. He can lean against them or just flat out stand there. But punching and throwing won't always get the job done, so Hercules also carries a sword for cutting and impaling his foes. And of course, with his insane strength, he can bend the sword easily and use it as a boomerang, and then he can straighten it right back out. Considering how tough Hercules is, he really doesn't need that much in terms of defense, but that thick tunic definitely protects him against some powerful blows. Hercules even has his very own pet, a Pegasus. He mostly uses it for traveling at insane speeds, but he brings it into battle often as well. Now, while Hercules is immortal and cannot die or be killed, his mortal body can still be destroyed. In fact, according to mythology, Hercules can still be harmed by poison or even fire, but for some reason, magic does nothing as he survived to swim in river stakes. Like I've said over and over, Hercules is strong. Like, really, really strong. He can lift gigantic rocks that clearly weigh hundreds of tons. Even as a baby, Hercules is strong enough to throw pain and panic over a mountain, and as an adult, he was able to throw several mountain-sized titans so hard they flew into space in mere seconds, which caused a supernova that created and moved stars. And this was before he realized his true power and became an immortal. Hercules is even tough without his powers, though. When he made a deal with Hades and lost all of his strength for a day, he survived blows from the Cyclops, and then defeated the Cyclops with his good old brains. Hercules isn't just tough though, he's also extremely fast. He can react to several speeding arrows at point-blank range, and on his Pegasus, he can fly from Mount Olympus to Thebes in 30 seconds, a distance of over 200 miles. That means Hercules on his Pegasus can fly over 30 times the speed of sound. Now let's see if this tough, speedy hero can keep from going back to a zero against Maui. Let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. That wasn't so hard. Kid, 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 how many horns do you see? Six? Eh, yeah, close enough. Let's get you cleaned up. Corn O'Keefe here, guys. It's time for a, a Disney duel, folks. Universes is back in action. We got Maui versus Hercules. Two quote unquote gods or demigods, you might say. I'm gonna go over Maui first. Yeah, as I just mentioned, he is a demigod, folks. He has immense strength, mainly lying in his arms and legs. Also, something else you might need to know. Maui also has incredible strength in his lungs, able to make and blow an entire path, make himself a freaking pathway, folks. He's a virtually immortal badass, as shown when he actually looks the same after a freaking thousand years time has passed. He's obviously very, very much durable, a lot of stamina going for him. Strong enough to easily crumble mountains, take down mountains. Then we move over to Hercules, Disney's Hercules. A straight badass in his own right, folks. Similar to Maui, he's a demigod. He's son of Zeus. He also has a virtually immortal form. Basically, it's like his quote-unquote god form that you see in the movie and in the Kingdom Hearts video game when you fight him with Sora. And he's famous for his incredible strength also being able to literally grab the tornado titan literally spinning him around with all the other titans inside of that tornado inside of the tornado titan tossing it all the way into space folks deep in deep in space being able to casually lift up large boulders takes down you know he took down the cyclops Pretty fast in his own right too. Got a heck of a head, but I'm sure y'all know. As Phil told him, use your head. So folks, this is gonna be tricky though. This is a tricky match, okay? But I think it comes down to this. If Hercules gets to go in his, you know, quote unquote god form, he's gonna be able to take down 
he's going to be able to take him down for the count. That's simple as that. If not, I think Maui could pull it off for real. I, but, I'm, but Hercules does have his godlike form, his full-on godlike form, and that, that puts the ice on the cake. I'm going with Hercules for the next Universe's Disney duel. Let me know what you think down below. As always, have a great day. Peace. And the results are in. The winner is... Hercules! Woo! Mythology is weird, but you'll always get the same results no matter what. Mythology only, Disney only, mixture of mythology and Disney, it all points to Hercules winning. Poor Maui. He's got some pretty cool stuff, but the cool things aren't exactly as they seem. And even if they were, I'll explain why they wouldn't work against Hercules. First, let's address what everyone's going to bring up. Maui pulling the sun. His tattoos show up when he earns them, so obviously he must have done it, right? Well, believe it or not, the sun in Polynesian mythology is represented by another deity whose power is unknown. Maui, with the help of his brothers, might I add, ran to the sun, lassoed it out of the sky, and beat it until it promised to move slower so the days would last longer. Of course, Maui didn't pull a real sun from space, and even if he did, it's still not impressive as Hercules. Hercules made a constellation creating supernova when he threw the titans, remember? As for Maui lifting the sky, no, he merely caught it as it fell. His his father did most of the lifting, according to mythology. And again, that still wouldn't be as impressive as Hercules who has the speed advantage as well. Sure, Maui could shapeshift into the world's fastest animals, but none of them would match up to the Mach 35 speeds of Hercules Pegasus. Then there's their source of power. Maui relies on his magical fish hook for just about everything. He pulls up islands with magic, not physical strength. Without it, he gets beaten by the giant crab Tamatoa. Hercules has more than enough strength to break Maui's hook. When Hercules had all of his powers taken away, he managed to survive a beating from and defeat the Cyclops, and he's faced much tougher foes. Maui hasn't even beaten Teka. Then finally is the difference in their immortality. While Maui can't die from aging, he can still be killed. In mythology, he was defeated in a not so safe for work way. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hercules can't be killed at all. And no, this isn't some Ganondorf only holy weapons no limits fallacy, it's the actual lore of mythology. Hercules had his skin burned off when he wore a poison tunic and was still alive. The only way he was able to break free of the horrible pain was destroying the rest of his mortal body so his immortal side could be free. And in the Disney version, his string of life couldn't even be cut. With greater speed, strength, the ability to destroy Maui's source of power, and superior immortality, Maui's ship is sunk. The winner is Hercules. Get ready for the next battle.